Hello, and welcome to Violin Class, the podcast for anyone who is learning the violin as an adult. I'm Julia, your host, a violinist and violin teacher who is specialized in working with adults, and it's been a little while. I am coming off of my maternity leave. As any of you with kids know, when you have a baby, some things have to give. And in my case, uh, this podcast was one of those things. But uh, baby is sleeping through the night. Things are moving along now and I have a little bit more time and I'm excited to get back into writing and releasing new episodes of Violin Class for you guys. So thank you so much for everyone who's written in uh, during my time away and who's left reviews, sent me emails telling me a little bit about your background. It's really helpful and motivating for me to hear from listeners just like you, no matter where you're at in your violin journey. And if you would like to get in touch, giving me a little bit of background, or if you're interested in violin lessons as I do teach privately online, you can get in touch with me at violinclasspod at gmail.com or through my website at violinclass.co. I will be referencing certain things throughout this episode, and if you are interested in checking those out, you can see the show notes, and I'll have links in my blog from there to any recordings or materials that I've talked about. And lastly, if you enjoy this show, if you have learned a thing or two, if you could take a minute to leave a rating and a review, that really helps small podcasters like me to reach a larger audience. For those of you who have done that already, thank you. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode where I'm going to share the advice that I would give anyone who is just starting out with the instrument. The first thing that I would do even before getting an instrument, before looking at teachers, is to look at my goals and my expectations. And just to be aware that learning violin is a lifelong endeavor. It's not something that you can do once and then be done with it. There's certainly room for intensive sessions, and that's actually how I think a lot of learning happens. When you have more time in certain seasons, you're going to put more time in and see more results, but it is a slow burn. You need to figure out how you want violin to fit into your life and not the other way around. So that means figuring out how you can set aside time for regular practice. And I'm not saying that you need to do a long sessions or a lot of practice, but it needs to be very regular. Consistency is the number one most important thing in any skill, but certainly in learning a musical instrument, certainly one as complex as the violin. So if you are in a busy season of life, that does not mean that you are not going to be able to learn this instrument, but you do need to have some sort of regular time that you can set aside, whether that's five minutes a day or 30 minutes a day. That is all you need to be able to get started and be successful in this, but it needs to be regular. I don't ask or require my students to practice every day. That is something that you hear a lot especially in advice that's geared towards children because they are also learning discipline and how to learn a skill for the very first time. From my experience in working with adult students, that is not realistic for a lot of people most of the time. Some of my students absolutely do practice every day for an hour, which of course is preferable to have more time and more consistent time. But some of my most successful students, the ones that I find making the most progress week after week, are very busy human beings with a lot of responsibilities, and they don't have an hour every single day to practice. What they do have, though, is a regular session that they put aside several times a week and a very focused practice plan, and they are able to make a ton of progress that way. So if you want any advice or ideas in putting together a practice plan or a practice routine, I have an episode all about that. So you can listen to that to give you some ideas. So going back to my point about setting realistic goals, you need to be really honest with yourself about how much time and energy you want to put into this endeavor because you really will get out of it what you put into it. You don't need to have an hour a day, but you do need to have some time and you do need to have the discipline to be able to play 
consistently and practice consistently over time because this is a journey that is never ending. You do not get good at violin in three months or a year or two years or five years or 10 years because your definition of what good is always changing. Having a mindset and being ready to put in the time and regular practice is the very first thing that you need if you're starting violin. And that's something that I would think about a lot if I were starting for the very first time. So with that in mind, the next thing that I would look into if I were starting is having the right guidance because you can have all of the will in the world. If you don't know what to do, you don't know what to do. The best guidance that you can have is working one-on-one with a teacher and if you're self-teaching to be looking at different resources for what to learn and in which order. So from a violin teacher's experience, it is so much easier and a lot more preferable to work with someone from the very beginning, from day one, to ensure that all of their technical foundational setup is sound, that everything is working correctly, that they're holding the bow right, that you're holding the violin right, pulling the sound, working on intonation, paying attention to the things that you should pay attention from day one. And that sounds a little bit counterintuitive with all the wonderful online resources that we have for most skills. You know, it makes sense that you want to get started on your own, go as far as you can, and then work with a teacher to supplement those skills. But if you want uh, classical training or if you want that kind of technique, it is better to start with a teacher from day one. And let me tell you why. And again, I don't want to discourage anyone who's not in a position to do that on their own. You can still learn quite a lot on your own. But again, I'm a violin teacher, so I'm going to give you the the violin teacher's perspective on this. When you are working on your own, it's just inevitable that you are going to learn some fundamental errors in your playing, whether it is holding the bow ever so slightly wrong or very wrong uh, with a lot of tension that there's something just a little off in the way your shoulders are, or again, very off in the way your shoulders are, just things that are going to cause a lot of tension in your playing and then a lot of tension in your sound. And if you're start starting out um, or if you've been a beginner recently, you know exactly what I mean. It's so hard to get a nice sound from this instrument. Uh, just playing an open string, you can tell if someone has been playing for 10 years or for 10 minutes. Uh, or 10 months or a year, you know, it's it's very apparent from the very first sound that you make. And I know we're all trying to have a beautiful sound to play in tune and all of those things. So a, a violin teacher is going to have the experience and the forward thinking to set you up for success for all of the later on techniques that you need uh, to have a beautiful sound to play the difficult repertoire. So when, you know, when I'm working with my students on day one, I'm thinking about which little details, which if you don't know about them, you know, you can't, you don't know what you don't know, um, are very easy to skip and overlook. What are those details that are going to allow this player to three, four de- years down the line, play with a beautiful vibrato? What things can we focus on in the bow that are going to set the student up for success in having a really relaxed sound? playing really fast a couple years down the line and playing off the string, all of these different techniques, they require essentially planting a lot of seeds at the very beginning and then later on you reap what you sow. So if you don't have that experience, even if you're following really good tutorials online, it's not to undercut any of those. I've made some of those myself. I think they're very helpful, but having the guidance from a teacher helps save you a lot of time in the long run because you are going to learn less bad habits. And I say less, not no bad habits, because no matter what, you are going to have some sort of technical imperfections in your playing. That's just because we're humans, not robots. And that's just part of learning violin. But if you're learning on your own, the chances of you internalizing bad habits are very, very high. And it's a lot more difficult to undo those habits and then learn something properly than it is to learn it properly for the very first time. And that for me is the number one reason why I recommend working with a teacher from the very beginning. 
because otherwise, essentially a lot of the time that you've put in creating those bad habits, you're going to have to work extra hard to undo them. So if you have the choice between starting on your own and then supplementing with a teacher or starting with a teacher just for a little while and then learning on your own, I would actually do the second option. If you don't have the budget for ongoing lessons and you plan on self-teaching and then maybe doing a little bit later down the road with a teacher, I'd recommend for you to try the opposite out. Start with a teacher just to, for a few months, make sure you have those fundamentals down that you're holding the violin correctly. And then you'll be able to make a lot more progress in the long run on your own than had you done the opposite. When you get to the teacher, you're going to have to be undoing things and essentially just rebuilding that foundation that you've already put in a lot of time and effort trying to build. So what if you don't have the budget or the time or the will to work with a teacher? It's an investment. It's essentially a, an extra bill that you're paying every month to be learning all of these skills. And I recognize that not everyone wants or can do that. If that's the case, I would be really selective in what you choose to follow. So I'm imagining that you're probably working on online tutorials or some sort of online resources. And I would try to just choose one. And that's really important in when you're working with a teacher as well. Every teacher has a slightly or really different way of working through things, teaching things. They do things in a different order. And every single one of us is convinced that our way is the best way. So uh, I would make sure that you're only choosing one as your at least primary instructor. Um, if you're supplementing with extra things, that's, you know, that's fine. Uh, but at some point, the teachers are, the instructors are going to be um, saying things that contradict each other. And let me give you a very relevant example um, from even just live lessons. When I was on my maternity leave, I had um, a colleague of mine who was working with my students uh, subbing for me. And some of the things that I would tell my students to do, well, she would tell them to do the opposite. And that's totally normal and standard, but it can be very confusing to a beginner. So from my perspective, most of my students had been playing for a little while, and I told my colleague to teach them exactly how she would work with her students, contradictions included, because it's really important later on the line to actually have those other perspectives working with another teacher. But if you can imagine, if you've never played the instrument before, and one teacher tells you to do this, and the other teacher tells you to do the exact opposite, you don't know which one to follow. So you have to do your research, try to find someone who seems like they have a lot of experience and that they know what they're doing. They have some solid classical training and teaching experience and you follow that person first. If you want to supplement, you know, maybe you're trying to learn classical violin, but you want to do a little bit of fiddle stuff as well. That's totally fine, but just have one to be the source of truth for you. And it's not to say that any of the teachers are necessarily telling you to do something incorrectly. But as a teacher, I have a certain order. I like to teach things because that's the way I know I can get results for my students. I teach this and then that. Maybe, for instance, working through the Suzuki book, I will skip a certain song and come back to it. And I won't do the same exact thing for each student because everyone has different skills and needs. But in general, there's a way I like to teach things. And every teacher is the same, but our ways are different. So that's my number one tip um, for actually everyone, whether you're working with a teacher or self-teaching, but especially for those of you that are self-teaching. I would also highly recommend getting some sort of structured instruction. Again, as good as YouTube tutorials are, it's really hard to know what to do and when with YouTube tutorials. Like you can maybe find some series that give you like the first five or 10 lessons, but that's it. So look into courses that have a more structured approach and method books. I really like method books. I use them all the time. So you can follow each lesson step by step. A lot of the time they'll have mp3 files for you to play along with or um, so some sort of link. So all of that is going to offer you the structure uh, that you can try to recreate what a teacher would give you. Obviously, you're not going to be getting the feedback, but it's a lot better than looking up things at random on YouTube. And then you're going to hit a wall because you're missing some of those fundamental things that were not taught to you in the right order. 
So to sum it up, if I were starting violin today, from day one, I would be looking into working with a teacher. You don't need to have any musical experience. You don't need to know how to read music. You don't need to know anything about classical music or the violin to start working with a teacher. They will teach you everything that you need to know and in the correct order. And if that's not in the cards for you, I would do a lot of research and choose a single instructor to be the source of truth for all of your learning. And I would order a couple of method books and then choose one to guide you through what you need to know and in which order. So when you're starting out, you also do need an instrument. I have an episode all about how to choose an instrument, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But to sum it up, if you are a beginner, my number one recommendation would be to rent a violin from a reputable violin shop in your local area. And this is totally worth a drive if you live an hour or even maybe a couple hours away. That is going to allow you to work with a much quality instrument from the get-go. That's going to be more motivating because the sound is going to be a lot nicer to listen to. The instrument is going to be balanced correctly. It's not going to be too heavy or kind of weird to hold. You can also have the luthier or the shop owner tune it for you. And just basically, you're going to be set up for success instrument-wise if you are working with a good quality instrument. Of course, if you have the means and you want to go right into purchasing an instrument, be my guest. But even in that case, I'd still recommend renting, even if it's just for a few months. Generally, violin shops are going to have some sort of like three-month contract. If you want more guidance on this, go back to my episode on how to choose an instrument. It's one of the very first ones that I put out on this podcast and I go really into detail based on what your budget is, what your needs are, and where you're at in your learning. So now I have addressed mindset, I have addressed guidance, and having an instrument. The last thing that I would recommend you do a lot of if you are just starting out or if you're thinking about starting out on violin is to listen to a ton of violin music. And this is where beginners now have a huge advantage over uh, anyone who started 10, 20 plus years ago because it's just so accessible. There are so many cool recordings, uh, both out through professional labels or indie recordings on social media, on YouTube, on Spotify. And so that is what you should be doing in the, those early days. There are so many benefits to listening to violin music. First of all, that's the best way that you can develop your ear. It's going to help you to d develop a better sense of rhythm, of intonation. And if you are also watching the recordings, say on YouTube, you can also start to develop a bit of an eye for technique. If you do this from the beginning, you're going to be able to more quickly distinguish right from wrong in how you're holding an instrument, how you're balancing the bow, how you're shifting, and all of that good stuff. So there's a big difference between active listening and passive listening, and I do have an episode on listening to music in the context of learning classical violin if you go back into the episodes of this podcast, but I wanted to address it here too because it's such an important topic that I don't think is talked about very much. So what is passive listening? versus active listening. So passive listening is when you're listening to music in the background, you're doing something else at the same time. That's how I'm sure a lot of us listen to music. If you're maybe at work and like to listen to some classical music or you're doing dishes, the same kind of context that you'd be listening to a podcast. And I think that's uh, very common and there's nothing wrong with that. I do that all the time. However, what you want to be doing if you are interested in learning the instrument and allowing listening to deepen your understanding of it is active listening. And this just means that you are sitting down and focusing only on the recording. You want to try to do this with the same type of intensity and focus that you would have if you're reading a book or watching like a, a drama series where you really have to be paying attention to the details. And a lot of us are not used to listening this way. So if you haven't, give that a try and just notice what if your mind starts to drift off, if you feel the need to be doing something with your hands, 
See if you can just sit and listen to an entire work of violin repertoire. And these are long, okay? Um, You don't have to sit down and start with a 30-minute concerto right away. I would start with a short movement of a Bach sonata or partita, or maybe a movement of a Mozart sonata or something more contemporary, maybe in the three to seven minute range. And I'll challenge you to just sit down and have some headphones in or turn your speakers on and just listen without doing anything. It may be a dark room and not before you're falling asleep, like really just listen to every note and focus. I want you to pay attention to how the piece of music makes you feel and try to actually label those more so than just this is a happy piece or this is a sad piece. Because first of all, there's going to be many layers that composer is going to bring you through a journey really in the same way as you would be if you were listening to a book or watching a series. You want to get used to being able to translate those feelings into words. That's a really important skill to develop that I think we skip over, especially in the early stages. But it's something that you can do even without your instrument, without any playing experience. It's super important in helping you to later be able to express yourself when you do have more of a technical foundation. The other thing that I think will really improve as you do this is your concentration. So if you are like me and like many people, you may have found that in the last few years, your level of focus and attention has been slipping. I have certainly felt that way. My husband and I talk about it all the time. We just feel like we can't concentrate in the same way that we could years ago or even when we were kids, which is kind of crazy. Um, But, you know, that's how things are with smartphones and social media and just things that are always demanding our attention. I think that listening to music and practicing an instrument are some of the best ways that you can improve your attention and your focus and start to feel like you have a flow, which is something that I know a lot of people feel, myself included, that we're, we're missing these days. So try to integrate some active listening into your day. It can be very short, but do try to work up to some of those larger works where you're just sitting and listening. If you're really trying to work on focus, I think listening to audio only is going to be best, but I would also really recommend watching some videos on YouTube. And these can be professionally recorded, an orchestra or a a soloist, but I would also recommend for you to check out some of the personal YouTube channels of some more, a lot of violinists have made YouTube channels and post their own content. A lot of it is professionally recorded, but it's not the kind of thing that would necessarily be released on a label or through Spotify. And it's just a really good way of getting a more intimate look at how everything gets put together, how technique works. You might get different angles that you wouldn't get in even in a concert where you're sitting farther away. So check some of those out. I will link some of the channels that I would recommend of of some younger professional violinists that maybe you, you haven't necessarily heard of, but I think are absolutely brilliant. Uh, you could also watch some violin competitions, such as the Fignel violin competition or the Menuhin violin competition, and those are really beautifully filmed. And any of the violinists that are featured there are amazing, like 100% you cannot go wrong, even if they didn't win a prize at that particular event. So what you can do is then look up their name on YouTube, and I guarantee that you will find many violinists this way, and they're doing some pretty awesome stuff. So when you're listening with a video, I think, again, it's a nice way to actually try to observe the technique, and I want you to focus on what the violinist is doing with their hands and how they are staying relaxed. The best violinists are going to make everything look very effortless, and as soon as you start playing, you realize how crazy good they are because, as you know, if you're any sort of level in violin, it is very difficult to, when you're starting out, to play without tension and to stay relaxed when you're just even holding the thing or playing a single note. I want you to pay attention to what is happening with the violinist's elbows, how the violinist is standing, and how they're holding their neck, if there's any tension in that, where their shoulders are placed, and how they are moving their fingers 
from their knuckles. So all those little details that if you are, you know, doing anything else, we're not going to necessarily be able to pay attention to. So that is really the essence of active listening. And I think it's a really important part of every violinist's practice. It is one of the advantages you have starting right now, because when I started violin, and if you are a returning violinist, YouTube wasn't around yet. All we could do is listen to CDs or go to concerts if we wanted to see people playing live. So take advantage of that and spend a little bit of time every couple of days watching and really analyzing a performance of a violinist with video. So that's what I will leave you with today. The first thing you can do right away is to start listening and listening and listening. If you're serious or just curious about starting playing, I would recommend that you seek out a teacher from the very beginning and that you go out and rent an instrument locally if that is an option that's available to you, even if it's a little bit of a drive. So I hope that this helps you if you are just starting out or if you have started already that it can confirm that you're on the right track. And that's it for today. I will be back in a couple of weeks with a new episode of Violin Class. If you have a topic that you would like for me to cover, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me at violinclasspod at gmail.com. And I also teach privately if you are looking for a teacher or just a one-off lesson to get some feedback on your playing. is something that I'm always happy to do with my listeners. And to all of you who have reached out with topic recommendations or just sharing your experience, and to those who have left a rating and a review, thank you very much. I really appreciate you for taking the time to do that. So happy practicing, and I will catch you guys at the next one.